Shoulders are left and chin up. Good. One more there. So come on and take it and yourself before you wreck yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Grace Sen and welcome to the Dr. Grace Experience. I started this channel because I wanted to share with everyone what great chiropractic care looks like. There's some, I would say more than some, there's a lot of disinformation out there about what we do, what we don't do, how safe or not safe chiropractic is. So I'm gonna show you first-hand experience as you watch this channel based on patient experience, um, how things go for people as they get care here. Hi everyone, welcome to the Dr. Grace Experience. And today I'd like to introduce you to Denise, one of my favorite clients. And uh, I'd like for her to share her experience at Sin Chiropractic Holistic Wellness Center. So Denise, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm and very happy to have you here. Thank you. Okay, so let's share with the audience. Yeah. Um, what brought you in here? Um, pain. Um, I had pain for many, many months in my back, shoulder, and my wrist. And, um, and I, how is this pain affecting your life? I had stopped doing things like gardening that I loved. I was just about to start pickleball and that was a goal of mine and I couldn't do that. And actually I was act so depressed. And I'm like, I need some help here. Right. Is this what my, I'm about to turn 60. I'm like, is this what my life's gonna be like? Wow. Yeah, it was, it was a bad time. And share with the audience, what was the process for you here? Okay, so coming here, I've been to other chiropractors and this process was nothing like I've ever experienced. I felt as soon as I walked through the doors, I was cared for and I was an individual and I was treated that way. From my nerve scan, finding out exactly what was wrong and then you and I sitting down and talking about what my body was doing. Right, and then we did, um a full series of x-rays, not just where you hurt, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So in our office, it's really important to take a look at the whole structure because there may be compensation going on that's contributing to the main primary issue. So we're very thorough and we like to take a look at from head to toe an individual's nerves, muscles, and bones to see what could be causing that problem. So share a little bit more on the consultation, please. Okay, so sitting with you was actually life-changing for me. Um, I felt like I had a great future and knowing that with your care that I was going to be um, better following your plan. And it was, it was, I don't know, I've never felt like this in my life. And so the plan for everybody to understand is actually a very data-driven plan based on the exam results so that it's customized. It's not just, let me just crack you. Um, crack is a four-letter word in this office. Crack is a four-letter word in this office. But when we're talking about specific comparisons, I do use the word crack, so it, it drives a point home. I know a lot of you are, uh, you know, crack addicted <laughs> when it comes to hearing the adjustment. But um, the specific plan is geared towards addressing the actual causations, real causes of one's um, body issues, so that we stabilize and get the person functioning at optimized levels. So you got a plan, and then... <laughs> Finally, it wasn't just, a, um, and no offense, but not just a crack, how it was with some other chiropractors. And so I had my plan, and it was just not the amazing adjustments, it was nutrition. Um, it was some um, great mindfulness for, on my part. And as soon as I walked in, every adjustment with you made my day better, and I'm not kidding you. Like I, from where I started, my wrists, I could hardly move. I don't know if you remember. I do totally They remember. were so painful, and you're like, I got you, girl. Like, I felt like, you do like finally somebody understands and up until now it's been probably six months my life has changed 100 percent. i can play pickleball now i can play pickleball now oh my gosh <laughs> and i um garden all the time and it's it's i don't know you've changed my life honestly it's an absolute pleasure to help you regain your function and level of happiness.
Yes. How has your level of happiness changed since starting Share Here? So when I, before I came in, I was, uh, like I said, almost 60. And I'm like, is this what my body's gonna be like? Like, I wanna go in my golden years, like fit and strong and happy. And I was totally bummed because I had been to some other chiropractors and it just wasn't working. And so since this time, I am 100% happier. I'm doing things that I've always wanted to do. And I am finally now 60. And um, I honestly think these are my golden years, for sure. It only gets better. Yes. Wonderful. Yay. Okay, so we're gonna actually show you how Denise gets adjusted. So you have a good idea what a complete adjustment looks like. Yes. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I take care of Denise. You ready? Yes. All right, so let's ready. go. First, I'm going to see if Denise's heels are lining up, and because she's been such a great patient, yes, they are, so I don't need to do anything there. All right, I'm going to check to see if her hips are moving, and right now, I'm putting equal pressure, right? But her left heel is further from the buttock than the right. That tells me her left hip is locked and stuck. So, I'm going to be adjusting her real quick with a very specific instrument called the activator and unlock the left sacralia joint. That's all it takes. Watch, now I'm gonna demonstrate. That's all it took. Nothing like a WWE move, okay? <laughs> now I'm going to palpate, meaning I'm gonna feel for each spinal joint to see how well it's moving or not moving. All right, so I'm finding some misalignments that are locked up and not moving in her mid-back. And so I'm gonna adjust her, okay? Excellent. That's the sound that you all love. I'm sure it's captured on the microphone. Okay, let's take another deep breath. There we go. Beautiful. All right, my love, excellent. Okay. I'm gonna have you lay on your right side. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna take care of Denise's lower spine because it's also having some fixations that need to be unlocked so she can have good movement. Good. Let us stretch. Wonderful. All right, let's go face down. I always check to make sure after one adjustment that she's leveled out before I do the other side if necessary. Good. And let's go to the left side down, Denise. Okay. There we go. Good, let it go. Wonderful. Let's go to down. Good. She's perfect. Good balance. And now we're gonna go to the face up position to check her neck area, okay? All right. Also, face up position, I'm gonna make sure Denise is balanced. Move your head a little. There you go. It's important that your legs and heels are even. If they're not, that tells me the way your weight bearer is off. That could throw your alignment off from all the way to the neck area. So Denise, her heels are even today, so I don't need to do anything for that, but I'm gonna check her ankles as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Then I check her feet. Good, nothing needs to be moved there. She's been very consistent. So today we're having some adjustments in certain areas. There's been days she's had to have a lot more. So it's all specific to the day and how you show up as to what I adjust to clear everything else so you walk out of here balanced, okay? So we're gonna do the neck area. So I'm gonna palpate to see exactly what's going on. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> feel that. Can you feel that? Relax your Nice. Turn all the way to the left and chin up. One more there. Good. Excellent. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna address her cranials. Contrary to belief, the skull plates can get jammed up, they're not fused unless you've had trauma somewhere in your history. So every visit, I check an individual's cranial alignment as well as spinal alignment, as well as extremity alignment. It's a complete adjustment. 
How's that feeling? So good. Perfect. Now, I want you to show the audience the right way to get up, up out of bed. Watch Denise. And there you have it. Have an awesome day. All right. So it's time to have a talk, you and I. It's about the forbidden S word. Come closer. Okay. It's sleep. After midnight. <laughs> All right. So lately I've been getting a lot of cases through my doors that have insomnia at the forefront of their issues. So why is sleep so important to our well-being? Well, let me tell you, it has everything to do with our well-being because just like a cell phone, your body needs to recharge during the night to get all the energy ramped up for you to use your body and your brain the next day. My battery died. So there are very easily fixable reasons why people can't get sleep or can't sleep all the way through the night. So I'm going to divide it into three different categories that makes it easy for you to understand. And by the end of this little segment, I want you to be able to have some usable action steps to get better sleep. Okay. All right. So there's three categories of life that can cause insomnia or inability to sleep all the way through the night. First category would be physical stress, right? What is physical stress? So it could be anything that causes strain to your body, right? Or your nerves or your muscles. So it's tension. Second category would be chemical stress. That could be anything you eat, drink, breathe, or slather on your skin. Lastly would be mental emotional stress. Y'all know what that is, right? So let's break it down even more. So physical stressors can be sitting all day without moving too much can be carrying a heavy purse ladies on one side on a repeat basis you all know that you have those purses that weigh 50 pounds right and it shouldn't have to be so i want you to unload those purses and make it as light as possible it could be also carrying heavy things on a repeat basis um, it could be sleeping all jacked up in crooked positions that can cause stress onto the body i can go on for days about physical stressors um, Third, second category would be chemical stressors, which is drinking way too much coffee. What's way too much? So studies show that an individual can safely have up to about 400 milligrams a day. That's about a cup of coffee, eight ounce cup of coffee. No more. You're kidding me, right? Are you kidding? You're kidding. If you're having horrible insomnia and you're drinking a lot of coffee, that could be the culprit. So those of you that are coffeeholics, I don't want you to stop cold turkey because you'll get a horrific headache that's going to explode your brain. Don't do that. <laughs> if you find yourself drinking way too much coffee, I want you to wean off nice and easy. So half of what you drink now for the next few days and then half of that for the next few days until you end up at zero cup of coffee. Give your adrenal glands a little break. Okay. Now let's talk about emotional stressors. Um, well, we all know that the TV and the internet throwing information at us, stressing us out. Um, all personal bias and agenda, agenda control. control. Um, inflation is stressing us out. So many different things. But think of your brain like a TV. You have multiple, multiple channels and streaming services. I want you to stay off of the news channels, the horror flicks, and anything that gives bad news because that can affect the tension in the mind, which could translate tension into the body. And sometimes it's just too much. It's just too stressful. <laughs> so let's bring it all back. What are some solutions to physical stressors? Number one, movement. I want you to go take a walk. I want you to stretch. I want you to sweat a little bit. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just put some good tennis shoes on and huff and puff, get some fresh air, at least 20 minutes a day. 
You don't have to do yoga and stand on your head. You can do nice, easy lengthening movements to your body. Future segments, I'm going to show you examples of all of this. Um, and I want you to break a little sweat. Sweating does the body good. It actually detoxifies the body, especially if you have a lot of bad eating habits. Emotionally and mentally, if you focus on things that you are thankful for, things that you did right, and things that you can create today, tomorrow, and the future will help tremendously for you to stay in a positive mindset. Now, there are aids to sleeping, right? So number one, I am totally not a fan of prescription drugs for sleeping. Why? Because if you read the side effects of it all, they're hallucinogenic and it can cause a whole plethora of issues for you. Elderly dementia patients have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor if you have high fever, stiff muscles and confusion to address a possible life-threatening condition. Or if you have uncontrollable muscle movements, as these could become permanent. In some cases, extreme high blood sugar can lead to coma or death. Other risks include decreases in white blood cells, which can be serious, dizziness upon standing, seizures, trouble swallowing, and impaired judgment or motor skills. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the side effects of it all, but the two main drugs out there that are prescription, one starts with an A, the other one starts with an L. Look it up, decide if you want to sign up for all the side effects of it. I had a patient one time who took the A drug couldn't figure out why he gained 50 pounds, 50 pounds in three months. Oh my God. Turned out he was sleep eating. So that is a side effect of the A drug, right? So don't let those little cute little butterflies of people sleeping and you having good night's sleep with Z's behind your, you know, butterfly trick you into taking these prescription drugs. Now, if you take some minerals, they can assist in your sleep. So magnesium is a great mineral to take for you to be able to sleep and conk out for at least seven hours a night. I've had somebody that was an insomnia for 20 years start care with me. And I said, why don't you take powdered magnesium? Just one teaspoon and a glass of water. Let me know how you do tomorrow. She called me the next day in tears, not because she was sad, but because she, tears of joy, because she said, Dr. Sen, I finally slept for eight hours straight last night after I took the magnesium powder. So I encourage you, it's not the pill that works. It's powdered magnesium. Okay. So keep that in mind. It's more bioavailable. Um, I'm not a fan of people taking um, melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that your body makes. So if you give yourself external melatonin on a repeat basis, your body's going to think, well, I don't need to make any. So it's going to depend on that melatonin. And what's going to happen is if you forget to take that melatonin or you run out of that melatonin, you're going to have some zombie like nights. Oh my God. Are you okay? because your body is not creating its own melatonin. Secondly, melatonin works in synergy with cortisol. You know, the cortisol is a stress hormone your body secretes when it's on fight or flight mode. Your body needs to be able to create its own balance. So if you, if you take too much of something externally that your body makes internally, then it's going to whack out your hormone system. For example, male bodybuilders. Now I have lots of friends that are male bodybuilders and some of them are competing at a pro level and they do have to take injections of anabolic steroids. What are you juicing, Larry? Are you juicing now? So what happens to somebody who takes lots of steroids? Well, they've shared with me that their testicles shrink. That's a bad thing to happen if you're a dude. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> Because the body stops producing testosterone if you're injecting it externally. So I hope you get the reasoning behind not taking melatonin. It's harmful and it's not something your body needs. Okay. Temporarily you can maybe for a few days, but not long term. So please don't do that if you're doing that now. So I hope I've given you some information that is food for thought. And I hope you get good night's sleep because that is the basis for well-being. More than exercise, more than eating good, more than 
all the things you do to get healthier. You gotta sleep. So don't be one of those people, I'll sleep when I die, uh, when I'm dead. That's a bad mentality. So happy sleeping. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to mention to y'all about alignment and the importance of alignment when it comes to sleep. So this is a chart of the spinal column. We have 24 movable joints in our spine. The first area is called C1, which is cervical one. There's seven bones in the neck. The first segment, C1, innervates or gives nerve energy to blood supply to the head, the pituitary gland, which is your endocrine system, your hormone functions. Um, your inner ear, your middle ear, and also your sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight or rest and digest mechanism. So rest and digest is your ability to sleep, okay? So if you can't shut it down at night, something is impinging that function. That something is a misalignment in your C1. So C1, when it's out of alignment, can affect you. You can possibly get headaches, sometimes anxiety or nervousness, and sometimes insomnia. So that's the third symptom over that happens when your C1 is locked, restricted, and out of alignment. So the solution to that is get your spine checked by a good chiropractor and get an adjustment and restore the alignment to your C1, and you'll be able to sleep like a baby. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the top 10 FAQs, other known as frequently asked questions that I've experienced in my near 30 years of practice. Okay, so here we go. Number one, what does a chiropractor do? Good question. So a chiropractor uh, assesses your spine and all movable joints in your body and see what is locked and fixated and corrects it by adjusting the spine. Number two, are chiropractors real doctors? Mm. The answer is yes. We're just not medical doctors, but we are doctors of chiropractic. So, so you know, fun fact, the first two years of chiropractic college is identical to medical school. I said, what? She said, yeah. I said, no. The only difference is third year, chiropractors get more nutrition, more biomechanics, more neurology, and more orthopedics than a GP. Mind blown. MDs get more toxicology, and general surgery and pharmacology. All right, number three. Can chiropractic adjustments cause strokes? Great question. The answer is, depending on the literature or the opinions of groups of uh, medical practitioners, it could be one in one million, one in 10 million, one in never. Close the my... answer is never. I Do you hear me? Never ever. Uh, the propensity for you to get a stroke from an adjustment is no greater than you going to your hairstylist, getting your hair washed, and keeping your neck extended for hours, or going to a doctor, medical doctor, and getting aspirin. That can also cause strokes. Typically, a doctor of chiropractic pays anywhere from $1,200 to $2,400 a year for malpractice insurance. A general practitioner in the medical field pays anywhere from $12,000 to about $24,000. An orthopedic surgeon pays an upwards of $250,000. For their malpractice premium. Damn! So, in risk management, the doctor that pays more has the propensity or possibility to harm more. So, if you do the math, I'll leave it there. Good point. Number four, is it safe? Well, based on number three, uh, I would say yes. Um, one time, fun fact, I had a insurance underwriter as a patient. And uh, I asked him, um, do you insure chiropractors? And he said, no. I said, why not? And he said, because I can't make any money off of you guys. Your premiums are way too low. You don't have any people making claims like I do with my medical doctors that I insure. Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. What is corrective care versus pain management? So, okay, let's start with pain management. Pain management chiropractic is good. It's better than taking pills. Um, but it's temporary because it doesn't give you long-term effects. Corrective care's goal is to measure the imbalances in your structure, which is your skeletal system, your muscle system, and your nervous system. And once we get all that data known, I can formulate a very specific correction plan to stabilize your nerve muscle bones so that your quality of life goes up and you're not always going into alignment or you're not injury prone.
Well, hello. I hope you enjoyed watching the content as much as I love making it. What? What? Oh, that's right. I promise you 10 FAQs. Frequently asked questions about chiropractic, but I only give you five. So what happened was, uh, this video is getting a little too long, so I decided to put five now and five for later. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to smash that like button. YouTube has a tendency to push out my content as we get more likes. Secondly, I want you to watch the next video. I hope you love it.